Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite nugget head, Ari. And I was trying to see if there was any uh, foundation still on my hand. Um, today's video, we are finally going to talk about The Promised Neverland. While I do this little look here, and um, I like to keep these little intros short, but I will start to add follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Plugging. I'm going to start plugging. And also subscribe if you end up liking this video. And I mean, obviously, like the video if you like the video, duh. Um, but yeah, let's keep it short and let's get into the video once again. So sorry. Putting this some stuff that's gonna be out of order again. Sorry. So let me just like prime my face while I wait for, you know some of the noise to go down. I'm filming outside of the time I normally film because I wanted to, I wanted to do some makeup and kind of get my mind off of what's going on in the world right now for a little bit. Um, so I decided like, oh, why not, you know, do my makeup. And I was like, well, you know what, if I'm gonna do my makeup, why don't we make it kind of productive and film it, you know? Um, so as you know, like I missed a week, obviously, you know, I didn't want to post cause it just didn't feel right. Um, I like, I recorded a kind of like a rant about how f crazy stuff is. So <laughs> um, I recorded a video kind of going on like a little rant about what's going on, but I decided not to edit and upload it just cause it doesn't feel right. Even though I've been like very vocal about, <laughs> actually do some makeup. I've been very vocal about, you know, change that needs to be seen in the makeup industry. And it would be, and I said it in that video that I'm probably never gonna, I'm actually never gonna upload because I'm gonna delete the footage. But, like, it almost, it feels wrong to speak up about something that trivial and to not say anything about this. But I've said, I've said a whole bunch on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter at all, shameless plug. Um, you would, you know, you would know, like I had, you know, I've said stuff about that. It's just, it's so draining and it's so tiring. It's so frustrating. I've been talking about this since back when I was on Tumblr in like 20, 2012, like 2011, 2012. Um, and it's just tiring. I'm tired. I'm actually physically tired. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed last week's video um rachel and victoria are really cool and they were really cool about me like not wanting to upload the original day that we set for uploading you know due to everything they're really awesome so hopefully you guys go check out their video or you hopefully you checked it out i don't i'm not good at doing youtube so. and we are finally gonna talk about the promise neverland i know i put it off for like basically three weeks now almost a month at this point but we're finally going to talk about it so get ready to be wrecked okay <laughs> um the promise neverland is an anime that came out 2019 i think it was fall 2019 i don't remember i don't I don't really pay attention to years the shows come out. I just be watching them whenever. It's basically a show about a bunch of children who are in an orphanage and three of the most intelligent children there find out a terrible secret. And they work and from there they plan their escape. Oh, you guys like my tan? You got tan. Um, I was at my grandparents' house helping with yard work the other day, and I got nice and soon. Sorry. Like I said, it's children, they're in an orphanage, and they find out a terrible secret. That secret is that it's not really an orphanage, it's a farm, and they are cattle um, for these creatures that eat their brains. Um, and the smarter you are, the longer they let you live so you can get smarter and more mature and your brain tastes better so these three children um emma norman and ray they enlist 
to the other older children, Gilda and Don. Um, they tell them about the secret and they all plan their escape. There's obviously, you know, lots of obstacles in their way. Um, such as, first of all, them being found out by their mama that they know the secret. And, you know, she t obviously takes measures so that she won't, you know, so that it won't happen because that's on her. Um, and it's just crazy. I'm, from just watching the show, like, I'm extremely excited about the next season because it should be awesome. Like, yeah, we we'll probably do a lot more world building. Like I did last time, I'll tell you about the main characters. Oh, this is a lot of um, product. Oops. Um, we have Mama, their caretaker at the orphanage. Um, we have Emma. She is kind of one, like our main protagonist. And she's very smart, but she's very emotional and stubborn and like headstrong. Uh, we have Norman. And he's obviously very smart as well. And he's very level-headed. Um, and we have Ray. And he is very... He, of course, like, they're all very smart. And he can kind of come up... He's very good at, like, tactical stuff, like planning things. Um, but he's not as, like, calm under pressure like Norman is. And he's not as optimistic as Emma. He's a little, he's a little depressed. He's like the Sasuke of the group, okay? And Emma is the Naruto, to be honest. Then we have Gilda and Don. So they're not the main characters, but they're two of the older children who Emma and Norman uh, enlist in their plan to escape. And they're very smart but like not on almost like a genius level like Emma and them but like Emma yeah Emma and them I'm not so I'm gonna call it Emma and them um and then we have sister Crone and I don't I don't know what I just like yay a black character in anime but she crazy y'all she crazy like in a weird unsettling way like I can't I couldn't figure her out the show starts off as the kids, you just see a regular day in the life of these kids. Except it's not quite regular because one of the kids is being adopted. And so the kids are having, you know, extra fun because she's getting adopted. And like, wow, that's so great. Um, and this little girl, she's six. She always has, she has this uh, stuffed bunny she always has with her. And when she, they see her off, they're like, oh, we're going to miss you. Um... And while the kids are out playing, they talk about this area of the forest where they live that they're not supposed to go because their mom, mama, she said it's dangerous. So they're talking about it. They're like, yeah, this is where all the kids go when mama takes them. But like, I wonder why they never write to us. Hmm. The little girl, she goes, well, when I leave, I'm going to make sure I write to you guys every single day. And they're like, OK, we're well, looking forward to it. Well, you know, they have dinner and later that night it's her time to go so she's going she gets her bag she gets like a cute little outfit with this little hat but so, you know she's going to her new family it's gonna be great we love it um but she left the bunny that she always has with her and ray is like oh like you guys should probably go uh you probably could catch up to her if you go now so emma and norman they take the bunny and they run to the gate and when they get there they see the truck that they she's supposed to go and they're like oh she probably hasn't left yet because the truck is still here they look in the back of the truck and there is the little girl but she is no longer alive so they're freaking out a little bit they end up hiding underneath the truck and they're listening on to what kind of is happening um to the conversation that mama is having with the uh, people who eat them they almost get found out but they leave and run away before they get caught but they leave a trace that they were there because the rabbit they left the rabbit they left the rabbit there and on their way back they still make it home to mama but they do stop for a moment because emma says like she wants to leave she's like we have to escape but 
Emma wants to escape with everyone. These kids that are there, they're her family. She doesn't want to leave them there. Norman's telling her, like, it's not going to be possible to leave with everybody. You know, there's kids that are infants, infants up to the age of, and up to the age of 12. So it's it would be really hard, practically impossible, to leave with them all. But she's like, nope, we're leaving with everybody. Um, and that's part of kind of what makes the whole plot like so difficult her insistence on leaving with everyone after that they come back and they start plotting they start plotting their escape so they start to plan and eventually they tell Ray um and you later find out that Ray actually already knew all of this he pretended that he didn't and I'll tell and I, I'm not actually I'm not going to tell you why but Ray knew all this and he prends, he prends, he pretends that he didn't know. And he's like, well, Emma, like, we can't leave with everybody. He's saying the same thing. And Emma's like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We're leaving with everybody. And he's like, well, if that's the case, we need to train them in a way that won't arouse suspicion or cause panic. So they're like, let's, excuse me, let's do it like running drills as like playing tag. Because they left the bunny there, uh, Mama knows that somebody found out and she already has her suspicion about who it may be. So she calls for backup from the company or whoever like that they are under. And then comes Sister Crone. Now Sister Crone, she's gone through the same training that Mama did, but she's not a mom because so Sister Crone, she comes and her job is to keep an eye on the kids. And Sister Crone, even though she is keeping an eye on the kids, and the kids honestly can't figure her out really either, but she basically figures out why she was kind of called there. And she's like, well, you know what? If I do something to kind of help the kids escape, it's going to be on her fault. It's going to be Mama's fault. And if it's her fault, then she'll be got, like, they're going to get rid of her and then I will be the mama. Sound planning. So she tells the kids, I'm going to help y'all escape. But before she can do that, uh, she is basically dispatched. And during the time where she's basically gotten rid of Crone, you find out um, some more uh, information about this world that they live in. One day they have a little mission and they decide that they're going to try to scout the outer wall area um, so that they can kind of know what they can be expecting. They're, they're in an enclosure and they decide to go scout a wall and Mala finds out, goes to them, finds out their plan, follows them. She goes to the wall where they are and breaks Emma's leg so that they can't leave. And she also tells them that Norman will be uh, leaving. He'll be getting adopted. Hey, Emma, Ray, Gilda, Don, and uh, Norman, they all know what that really means. Younger kids don't. Norman, Norman's getting adopted. And Emma says, well, you know what? We don't all have to escape together. You escape first. We'll secretly bring you food. Just hide in the woods. Um, you know, we know how to do X, Y, and Z. Just hide out in the woods and and wait for us. He's like, okay, Emma, I'm gonna escape. Here's the stuff you need to escape. Escape during our playtime. So then by the time she calls everyone for dinner, she won't even know that you've gone. She won't notice until it's too late. So they come in for their playtime and mama, she's like, okay, do, 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 we're, we're missing somebody. And they're excited because they're like, he got away, but here he comes, um, coming up the hill to them. And they're like mad because they wanted him to escape. They wanted him to escape. Where I left off was Norman escaping and he's told them he was but he doesn't um mama was saying like oh there's a kid missing who's missing and they're looking at her like ha 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 but jokes on them because norman came come came up the hill um he gets adopted 
we don't see his last moments but we do kind of know what happens when they get adopted though i have a theory on that that i'll bring up at the very end they were very close to norman so they're very upset and they can't really do anything they basically lose hope um ray holds himself up in the library emma just sits outside in the spot where she ray and norman used to always sit you know basically are waiting for emma to her leg to heal so they could escape but there's really nothing going on because you know nothing's really being said but two months pass and it's now ray's turn to go he's turning 12 it's january so it's winter he's turning 12 it's his time to go and he decides that instead of you know dying at the hands of whoever is going to take his uh, brain basically burn the whole house down with him in it so but emma comes down to talk to him and it turns out that she actually didn't lose hope she was just acting as if she did because when norman went to see you know what was going on he came up with a whole plan and so emma during that two months she was so she was basically giving orders under the guise of other kids checking on her she was giving orders on like trainings and who to tell what and got more kids in on it and actually what she decided to do was she decided to just take the kids she followed their advice was just going to take the kids over the age of six i believe and they escaped and they were going to come back um in two years to get the other kids who would then be eligible to be eaten and the other thing is there's more than one farm so they're not only coming back for the kids in theirs but they're coming back for the kids in the other farm to get them as well obviously there's things i skipped over because i don't want to give you like certain plot points but that's kind of the general gist of things and now to talk about how i feel norman's death gutted me it ruined my life because i really had hope i really had hope um like that really messed up my whole entire life like i could have gone um my whole life without seeing that <laughs> however i don't know if he truly died because of something that's revealed when crone dies i don't know if he really dies so that'll be interesting to kind of see later he really if he actually truly is dead like we believe or if there's any hope at all okay so this is a tiny i mean obviously the whole video is a spoiler i mean i'm thinking i'm gonna call this little series spoiler alert since you know i'll be talking about various shows so like literal spoiler um the moms have to come from somewhere so i mean and obviously this is self preser obviously the, the answer is self-preservation but it's like crazy how like they all know what's going on yet they still decide to be a part of like this cruelty they still want to be a part of this and at the same time like they agree to this and they're prisoners they're essentially prisoners and it's sad um this show was wild i'm really excited though like for the next season i gotta look up when it's coming out because i'm excited to like see more of the world and, and find out why their world is like this like what happened to human beings because yeah i think it's set in like 2045 or some mess like that so like what happened what happened aliens probably definitely aliens i mean if we really think about it i didn't actually write down my questions but it's a very good show like it'll have you kind of like like really nervous for the kids and it'll have you sad for the kids um confused and also like angry it's 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 a really good show it's really well done all right i, did, I didn't i didn't think to write down any questions or thoughts 
I just know that I felt a lot of things after watching it. It's definitely one of those shows that like is kind of like common, not to say like social commentary, but like because it's definitely not like social commentary on the level that like of like psychopaths or a Ma uh, parasite the maxim. Both fantastic shows, and I will gladly rewatch those if you guys want me to do a video on them. I've been meaning to watch Par rewatch Parasite the Maxim for a while anyway. So let me know if you guys want me to do that. But very well done show. And it's, I don't think I've seen any shows like it, but I'm not going to sit there and be like, it's so unique. It's the pinnacle of anime. Like, it's not. But it's a really good and well done show. I'm watching a lot of stuff, I guess. Um... I've taken a little tiny bit of a break from Avatar. I tried watching it the other day, but um, to kind of like watch something lighthearted and get my mind off of stuff. But I watch, I was watching it. And of course the episodes I was on was the tales of bossing say in Abba's lost days. Like that is not lighthearted. That's not what I signed up for. I'm hurt. So it made me like cry. And I was already crying earlier. Anyway, and that was today, mind you. <laughs> it was today. But what have I been watching? I feel like I said in the other video, I've been like watching Riverdale. You know, this isn't really isn't too terrible. It really isn't too, too bad. Oh, so like I was saying, I've been watching, kind of like re-watching and watching stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of all the stuff I've been rewatching while in quarantine. Um, I rewatched my love story, still like as fantastic as I remember it. Obviously, like I said, I've been watching uh, Avatar. What else did I rewatch? I started rewatching Inuyasha. Um, cause sometimes I find that like I watch stuff just to be watching something, and like sometimes I do watch stuff like just as background noise while I'm like cooking or something. But I find that like sometimes I just watch stuff just to watch stuff and I'm not really like thinking about what I'm watching. Oh, I started rewatching Durarara like two days ago because I and that's another show like I feel like I watched it to like consume it. But I also wasn't like paying attention necessarily. So I wasn't 100% seeing how everything kind of tied together until the end. And even watching it a second time. I um so yeah like i've been watching a lot of stuff for that very reason just because i watched it just to watch it and say that i watched it not to like have any thoughts granted you you, it, you don't have to watch something to have thoughts on it like just to you know just to be able to say like you can just watch something just for the sake of watching it but i don't know sometimes you know, maybe a little more uh present all right, so that's this look pretty much. Well, this is the look. Keeping it real simple today with like a little pop of green. Um, second thing, The Promised Neverland is a great show. Go watch it. Go love it. Go cry. Okay. Um, I can't even like. I'm surprised I didn't write down any thoughts like other than how I felt about Ray's death. Ray's death. Norman's death um because like that really hurt that hurt um yeah there um yeah so that's this video i guess i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do next week's video on so i can like film that soonish um let me know if there's anything in particular that you want to like here are my thoughts on while I do my makeup. Any shows, uh, anime, you can just leave in the comments a certain show and I'll put down if I've ever watched it or not. And so that way it number one gets me more stuff to talk about, more shows to talk about on this channel and it also uh, gives me more shows to watch. So there's that. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time around, okay? I keep doing this I keep I go on and on and I don't consult my little notes that I made like what's the point of making the notes are you if you're not going to consult them Ugh.